In 1958, at the World Exhibition in Brussels, 12 of the best films of all time and people were named. One of the tapes that made it on the list was the film Earth by Ukrainian filmmaker Alexander Dovzhenko. This movie remains to this day highly impressive for its amazing artistic perfection. Alexander Dovzhenko is justly considered to be director and cinematographer number one in Ukrainian cinema, but we know that he has a very high ranking among the most illustrious figures in the film industry, in the European world, and in fact the Soviet hierarchy. Moreover, there was such a triad as Eisenstein, Pudovkin and Dovzhenko, and that is basically comparable to the Italian artists of the Renaissance epoch, Michelangelo, Raphael and Leonardo da Vinci. Alexander Dovzhenko came to cinema at a mature age, and he stood out among beginning directors for his unique manner. All the films of Dovzhenko as a former painter began their life on paper. He painted every scene of a future movie. The only criterion for building a frame for his work was beauty. The director was able to see beauty in everything from the early days of his childhood that he spent on the Desna River. And this is exactly what he wrote about in his personal diaries. I am happy that I was born on your banks. I drank your soft, cheerful, grey-haired water in my unforgettable years. I walked barefoot on your fabulous sands. I listened to fishermen chatting on your boats and sermons of the old men about the good old days. The future film director was born in the autumn of 1894 in a peasant family in the village of Sosnitsya in the Chernihiv Oblast. Already in his childhood, Alexander faced a disaster. Of the 14 children born in the family, only he and his sister survived. This early encounter with death made him realize the meaning of life. As such, he was so eagerly drawn to gaining knowledge. He recalls his youth as a kaleidoscope of bright pictures. The Hluhev Pedagogical Institute worked as a teacher in the Zhitomir Oblast, education in the Kyiv Commercial Institute and then at the Kyiv Academy of Arts. Then he served in the Ukrainian Insurrection Army, was arrested and then sent to a concentration camp. In an earlier film by Dovzhenko, Back of the Diplomatic Courier, there is the motive of tracking. You are in space, which is viewed from all points, and you cannot hide. You are visible everywhere. Obviously, this is a personal motive related to the fact that Dovzhenko was arrested in late 1919 by the Cheka and placed in a concentration camp. And the concentration camp symbolizes the fact that you cannot hide. You do not have a personal corner where you are invisible. You are seen everywhere. And this motive can be seen in some of Dovzhenko's films. In 1926, Dovzhenko started working at the Odessa Film Studio. Dovzhenko, as man of extraordinary talent, was simply tired of his daily caricature work, which he created for Ukrainian newspapers. In 1924 to 1925, he earned his living drawing cartoons on political, literary, cultural, artistic topics and so on. He was in demand in the newspapers, but apparently it was humiliating for him. And for some reason he decided that he would be a great comedian. That's what he thought, that he is a great writer of comedy scripts. He wrote two scripts for the films Vasya the Reformer and The Barrier of Love, and apparently he was fully convinced that they would be quite amusing and funny for the public viewing audience. His first films, Vasya the Reformer and The Barrier of Love, were shot in very difficult conditions. The camera operators did not understand his ideas as the director of the films. I think could only deeply understand his scenario materials on his own as his creative outlook on life differed from that of an ordinary artisan in cinematography. As you can see, that's how things happen in life. So it is quite difficult to call these films masterpieces. Dovzhenko, the director, with his inherent, inimitable style, was born much later. With great enthusiasm, he began work on the film Zvinihora, which was released on the big screen in 1928. What was Dovzhenko's start as an original artist? This is the film Zvenihora, which, like the poetry of Shevchenko, provides a four-layered historical structure. This is about a time that passed long ago. There are also Scythian times, which tell about how a Ukrainian girl named Roxolana betrayed her people, 
fallen in love with the Scythian leader. Then she came to her senses and came out against him. So he took revenge and made sure that all the treasures of Ukrainians disappeared. But they must be found, and internal grandfather goes looking for them. The second layer is the Haidamaki movement in the 18th century. The third one is modernity, the civil war, the beginning of the 1920s. The fourth layer is the future. It's hard to describe the hype that began around the film. Everything that happened in the film struck not only the audience, but the filmmakers. Difficulties with the reception of the film's Venehora arose with heads of the All Ukrainian Photo Cinematography Administration. Two top Soviet filmmakers, Eisenstein and Pudovkin, who at that time had already made the films Battleship Potomkin and Mother, were invited. The two greatest masterpieces are unsurpassed so far. They did not want to come, they were persuaded, they came and sat down. In the tenth minute, Eisenstein turned to Podovkin and said, there are already three of us. A very interesting fact is fixed in history. In the tenth minute of the screening, they realized that in Soviet cinema, there was yet another filmmaker aside from them. The film's Venehora was successfully screened in Moscow, France, Holland, Belgium, Greece and Great Britain. It was also shown on the big screen in the US, Canada and Latin America. Inspired by success, Alexander Dovzhenko began work on the revolutionary epic Arsenal. In the basis of the second film of the trilogy, the author put the plot of the tragedy of the national defeat and the uprising of the Kyiv plant Arsenal against the Central Rada. Arsenal is a film pro Arsenal is a film about the fact that you cannot rub out the desire and fight for freedom in a human being. Indeed, Arsenal is a political movie about the uprising at the Arsenal plant. But Dovzhenko expressed this revolutionary explosion as a human desire to realize himself. It was not for nothing that the events of the First World War took up so much space in the film. And the tragic dependence of a person on circumstances is higher than that. It was in the film Arsenal that he created the world's greatest tragic image of war in the form of a German soldier who was poisoned by mustard gas. It was brilliantly played by the great Ambrosi Buchma. It was in the film Arsenal that Dovzhenko tried to create trails by editing. I mean artistic images that reveal the philosophical essence of events. This was a very important element in this film to convey the essence to the viewer audience. In 1930, the third film of the Ukrainian trilogy of Dovzhenko, the film Earth, was released. According to film critics, the film became the standard of a new movie that can captivate the audience, make them feel, rejoice and cry along with the characters of the film. The rapturous and comical silent movie actor Charlie Chaplin said, Slavs so far have given the world and cinematography only one creator, thinker and poet, Alexander Dovzhenko. But the joy of the creative success of the film Earth was suppressed. A few days after the release, it was banned. The author was accused of biologism, pantheism and the chanting of the kulaks. The film Earth was subjected to very strong criticism. It was screened in cinemas, but after just 10 to 12 days, it was removed. And they cut out all the dubious parts of the film. For example, an episode showing a naked woman named Natalia, the bride of Vasily, who in protest, this is a vital and spiritual protest. By the way, in cinema of that time, the phenomenon of a naked woman, this feminine flesh, as part of a cosmic huge body, was an absolutely unique episode. It was a totally unique image. In 1934, Dovzhenko was forced to leave Ukraine and move to Moscow. He fled because he suspected that the highest party leaders of the Republic were about to arrest the controversial film director. 
There was such a threat that Dovzhenko could expect the same fate as Kurbas, Kulish and many writers and artists. Dovzhenko's friends, to ensure his safety, arranged for him a meeting with Joseph Stalin. They had a long conversation and in the end both were satisfied with the results. Stalin asked him and convinced himself that Dovzhenko was a man of communist utopia. This was largely the case. Dovzhenko was a leftist artist. This is a simple truth, just like most of the artists of the Soviet Union and Western Europe, who at that time was not leftist, in addition to a small part of the intellectuals. And so Stalin, during the meeting with Dovjenko, was convinced. He valued his talent, certainly. Otherwise, he would have put him into historical oblivion. But here he was convinced that his views were correct. Alexander Dovzhenko dared to tell the leader of the peoples that he supports socialist transformations in the country of the Soviets. But he cautiously mentioned that it is not necessary to eliminate everything, but to master the uninhabited regions of Siberia or the Far East. Stalin agreed and proposed to Dovzhenko to make such a film. And in 1935 there was a film called Aerograd. What is the film about? About a city of heaven. There is the definitive plastic image. These are planes, armadas that fly, and people go down from them. This is a heavenly city that settles on the earth. These are heavenly people with cosmic notions of transformation. Then there was the film Shores which he shot for nearly four years. In May 1940, he finished the script for a new film. Finally, he was allowed to begin to fulfill his long-standing dream, the production of Taras Bulba. The director found actors and found the location for the shoot. The first footage was scheduled for June 23, 1941. And on June 22, the war began. He was among the first to go to the front line. As a reporter of the Krasnaya Zvezda newspaper, he wrote many excellent stories, essays and articles. All of them were the embodiment of the author's feelings and pains. In 1942, Dovzhenko published in the Zvestia newspaper an article titled Ukraine on Fire. The same name was in the script written later. Stalin could not forgive the insult he had suffered. When this script appeared on Stalin's desk, the Soviet leader was outraged. First of all, because in the film story a drama of Ukraine was extracted from the general Soviet system. What is this? Pardon me, what kind of a separate Ukraine? Stalin was literally shocked and said in his frantic rage, this is a totally nationalistic view and so on. Dovzhenko was not arrested. He was simply dismissed as the artistic director of the Kiev film studio and he was transferred to the Moscow Central Newsreel studio. After Stalin's death, Dovzhenko tried to return to the big screen, but his attempts were an exercise in futility. After that, the famous film director was even banned from setting foot on Ukraine. The famous writer Oles Honchar told me that once in Moscow in 1954, he met Alexander Dovzhenko, and he said to me, I'm going to ask Nikita Khrushchev to let me go to Ukraine. A few days later he met Dovzhenko again, and he told me, Nikita was as cold as ice. It is clear why Khrushchev did not want to let the director go to Kiev, because he knew him well. There was a mutual understanding between them, but in 1954 Khrushchev understood what he would do, which would lead to the appearance of Dovzhenko at the Kiev film studio. A new life would explode there. For what? So let it be as it was before. And so Dovzhenko stayed in Moscow. A consolation for the director was a film about Maturin. Later he was allowed to travel to Kahovka to build a hydroelectric station. In his late years, Dovzhenko was engaged in teaching. He taught at the All Union Institute of Cinematography. Since it was interesting to me, I sometimes ran out of my lectures and sat down in his audience. 
And I was not alone. There were many more students. He saw that other people came, but he enjoyed this. And I remember very well how he read his script, poem about the sea to his students. He taught in Moscow in Ukrainian. Everyone understood him. There were no language problems then. He reads like this. Frame 1. Geese are flying. Frame 2. Landscape. Frame 3. The geese are still flying. Frame 4. A landscape that has never existed. The first footage of the Poem of the Sea was scheduled for November 26, 1956. On the night before the first working day, the heart of the great cinematographer stopped beating. Alexander Tovzhenko was buried in Moscow, far from his homeland. The Ukrainian film master achieved glory and fame immediately after his death. First it was in Brussels in 1958. The film The Tale of Flaming Years, based on Alexander Dovzhenko's script filmed in 1960 by his wife Yulia Sonseva, was awarded at international film festivals in Cannes, London and Los Angeles. So Alexander Dovzhenko posthumously went down in history as a poet of cinema. He was the first to introduce Ukrainian national symbols and artistic images in film. This tradition actively developed in Ukrainian poetic cinema in the 1960s and 1970s.